A cordial greeting. Today is August 27, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, I would like to provide an update on the possible development of a low-pressure system near the intertropical convergence zone. This system has a low probability of development as it moves westward towards the Caribbean. While the National Hurricane Center has marked this area with a 20% chance of development over the next seven days, since last night, we've seen a trend in models showing a lower probability of development. In this video, I will be updating the model projections and what we can expect in the Eastern Caribbean region. We will also discuss a new tropical wave that will be moving off the coast of Africa, which has potential development chances. On the other hand, in the second part of the video, I would like to provide a brief explanation of why the Atlantic Ocean has remained very calm in terms of cyclonic activity, contrary to what we projected at the beginning of the season. The forecast for a hyperactive season has not materialized, and this has been a topic of much discussion in recent days, so I would like to give a brief summary to explain the theories on why the Atlantic has been so inactive. More importantly, I want to answer the question of whether we anticipate it continuing this way, or if it will become active in September, and perhaps compensate for the lack of cyclonic activity we've seen during August. If we analyze the visible satellite image, we can see that there is a weather disturbance associated with the intertropical convergence zone that remains quite active, generating thunderstorms near latitude 5 degrees north. This is precisely the area where global models yesterday showed the development of a low-pressure system that could find favorable conditions for development as it approaches the eastern Caribbean region. In fact, if we zoom in on the infrared satellite image, you can see the intense convection area developing in this zone. Due to the projections shown by the models yesterday, the National Hurricane Center marked this area with a 20% chance of cyclonic development. It's very likely that tonight these development probabilities will decrease to 10%. On the other hand, I suspect that in the coming days, the National Hurricane Center will mark the region with cyclonic development probabilities because a strong tropical wave will be emerging in this zone and could find favorable conditions for long-term development. I also wanted to mention that the development of a low-pressure system in the intertropical convergence zone is not associated with a tropical wave, and in this type of scenario, global models often struggle to make accurate projections. This means there is a lot of uncertainty. Even though today most global models do not develop a tropical cyclone, we will continue to monitor the upcoming projections in case we see any changes, especially until we have a defined low-pressure system. The projections may vary significantly in the coming days. This is why it's important for those in the Eastern Caribbean to continue monitoring this area in case of any unexpected changes. The important thing is that, for now, we can remain calm as there is no imminent threat to the Caribbean. The two zones that we will be monitoring in the coming days are clearly visible in the GFS model ensemble. The first is associated with the area marked by the National Hurricane Center, where some members of the American model still project the possible development of a tropical cyclone. However, this represents a significant change from yesterday when almost all members developed a tropical cyclone, and today, only about 10-15% to of the members show a tropical depression developing towards the eastern Caribbean. So, the trend today is that the development probabilities in this zone have decreased considerably. On the other hand, the American model ensemble begins to mark the area west of the Cape Verde Islands as a zone where a tropical depression could develop in the long term, between 7 to 10 days. This is associated with the next tropical wave that will be moving off the coast of Africa at the end of this week. Fortunately, most of the members maintain a northwestward trajectory, making it likely that if this next tropical wave develops, it will follow a path away from the Caribbean region. This is definitely good news, but we will continue to monitor any changes in these projections. Additionally, the European model ensemble generally agrees with this idea. We will monitor the area marked by the National Hurricane Center, where some members show the development of a tropical depression. But like the American model, today the number of members developing a tropical cyclone has dramatically decreased compared to yesterday. And just like the GFS model, the European model also has more support for the development of the next tropical wave just west of the Cape Verde Islands, but also marking a favored trajectory towards the northwest or north, moving away from the Caribbean region. In fact, today, the only operational model that develops this first disturbance is the German model, which shows a tropical depression forming east of the Lesser Antilles this weekend. Although the German model is quite good, it does not surpass the forecasts of the GFS and European models, neither of which develop this disturbance before reaching the Caribbean region. We also have the projection from the UK model, which this afternoon marked a strong low-pressure system moving through the Eastern Caribbean at the beginning of next week. For this reason, we will continue to monitor any low-pressure system that develops in the intertropical convergence zone. So, we will continue to monitor what happens in this area, and keep an eye on what happens with the model projections. Today, the projections have been very favorable, as they have reduced the development probabilities of this first disturbance. However, with the second tropical wave, the development probabilities have increased. Although they favor a path gaining latitude quite quickly, it seems it will not be a threat to the Caribbean. 
Now, in this second part of the video, I would like to talk a bit about the possible reasons why the hurricane season has been relatively inactive during August. Despite projecting hyperactivity for the latter half of the month, I want to review the elements that lead to a forecast of a hyperactive season, which has not yet materialized. To do this, it's best to start by looking at sea surface temperature anomalies. First, notice that in the equatorial Pacific region, sea surface temperatures remain below normal and are currently in neutral ENSO conditions, possibly transitioning to a la Nina phenomenon during the fall. This means that the El Nino phenomenon is not present in the Pacific, so wind shear across the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic continues to be below normal. This is a factor that would favor cyclonic activity. On the other hand, in recent months, the main cyclonic development zone has continued to have above normal temperatures, reaching extreme levels during this summer. In fact, notice that over the past month, there has been significant warming in the main cyclonic development zone, which extends from the Caribbean to the west of Africa. On average, temperatures in this zone have exceeded 29 degrees Celsius, and according to the records we have, this was only surpassed last year. This means that the comments in some media suggesting that the Atlantic is cooling are completely false, especially the North Atlantic has continued to see warming waters over the past few months. There is even a possibility that during September, it will reach record levels, matching or surpassing the maximum temperature recorded in 2023. So, sea surface temperatures are extremely warm in the main cyclonic development zone, which is also a very favorable factor for a hyperactive season. On the other hand, in recent weeks, there has been a lot of talk about the equatorial Atlantic zone, where temperatures remain slightly cooler than usual, and where a NOAA publication suggested that there was a possibility of developing the Atlantic Nino phenomenon in the equatorial region. This news has caused some confusion on social media, and I wanted to explain that this cooling of the waters in the equatorial Atlantic is a normal process we see during the summer, as shown in this graph. What is true is that the cooling we saw from March to June was quite significant, but currently, temperatures are only slightly cooler than usual in the equatorial Atlantic region, and we are far from developing the Atlantic Nino phenomenon. Personally, I doubt this is having a significant influence on the hurricane season in the North Atlantic. In fact, the following graph shows how temperature anomalies have varied in this zone of the Atlantic. As you can see in the graph, after significant cooling between June and July, temperature anomalies have remained fairly constant over the past few weeks. At the moment they are not approaching the level that would be considered the development of the Atlantic Nino phenomenon. For this to happen, the average values over the last three months need to be at or below negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. During August, we have seen that the trend is moving away from that value, so in my opinion, the Atlantic Nino phenomenon will not be developing during the peak of the hurricane season. So the question is, if we have low wind shear and extremely warm sea surface temperatures across the main cyclonic development zone, why have we seen such an inactive period during August? It seems that this is due to tropical waves exiting at relatively high latitudes near 20 degrees north, whereas they typically exit further south, near 12 degrees north. This has a significant influence on the tropical Atlantic zone, because when tropical waves exit at high latitudes, they drag dry and stable air associated with the Canary Islands currents. This is precisely what we saw over the weekend, where a tropical wave exited at a high latitude and helped bring down dry and stable air from the Canary Islands towards the tropical Atlantic zone. This seems to be one of the most influential factors and why tropical cyclones have not been able to form in the Atlantic. This is because tropical waves exit at a fairly high altitude, and the dry and stable air essentially kills these tropical waves as they move across the North Atlantic. However, this may be changing over the coming weeks. For example, the next tropical wave, which I mentioned earlier in the video, and which will be moving off the coast of Africa, will be exiting at a rather low latitude near 12 degrees north. Under this scenario, dry air is not favored to descend into the tropical Atlantic. It is very likely that this next tropical wave will have better development opportunities. And although in the coming weeks and months we will continue to study which factors have influenced this cyclonic activity, I suspect that this could change during the month of September. It's possible that at some point the Atlantic will become active again. So it's important for everyone to stay alert and prepared for the peak of the season, even though there is no immediate cyclonic threat at the moment. Well, that's all for this video. We will continue to monitor this disturbance and the next tropical wave, and tomorrow I'll update you on any changes in the global models. Before saying goodbye, I wanted to invite you to check if you're subscribed to my channel. Go to the bottom of the video and click the red button that says subscribe, then click the bell so you get notifications when I record new videos. Well, I hope you all have an excellent night.